Good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome to ADAP's podcast, Prevention 365, Prevention Every Day in Every Way. All right, this is ADAP's uh, weekly podcast to talk about issues related to alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs, or ATOD, in a prevention sense, right? And when you think about it, that's prevention, that's whole person, that means life in general is about prevention and being your best. This is a podcast that was conceived and hosted and conducted by um, ADAP's community prevention team in partnership with the development team. And the great thing is they have let everybody from ADAP uh, have a chance at Prevention 365, Prevention Every Day in Every Way. Uh, my name is Joel Jacinto and I'm part of the West Adams Workforce Center or the Employment Access Team uh, here at ADAP. And you know what? I am pleased to introduce right now Two titans, two titans <laughs> of, of the community, right? Uh, the, the concept and this um, prevention podcast is going to be Talk Story with Mike and Carrie. Let's welcome them, Mike and Carrie. You know, together, Mike and Carrie have over almost a century of service, over a century of service in terms of their tenures as executives. They are, I like to consider them the ali'i of API leadership. Ali'i is a Hawaiian term for royalty. The ali'i of API leadership, <laughs> right? And um, I think this is Kerry's first time in, in terms of a podcast, and I don't think- I'm nervous now. No, it's okay, <laughs> bro. This is, this is talk story time. With, with Carrie and Mike, and Mike and Carrie. So this is your time. But I don't think you folks have been ever uh, interviewed together. So this is something that we're going to do to, uh, that's new, OK? And um, we're going to start it off by kind of just checking in. Mike, you have just you know, made a kind of a big transition in your life. And there's all kinds of things going on. So we wanted to get a check in and start with that traditional Hawaiian greeting of, how's it? Mike, how's it? <laughs> how's it? <laughs> How are you? Good. Good? Good. How do you feel? Good. Good. I mean, last week was a, a Thursday or Friday was last Thursday was a big time for you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. How how was that for you? Annual board meeting, my last annual board meeting. Wow. Yep. And on uh, Monday, I uh, became uh, president emeritus. Woo! PE. Uh, that uh, means I don't do too much anymore. <laughs> 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 so what have you been doing the last three days? What, do you, what did you do? Oh, I've been checking my email and stuff like that, but okay. mostly cleaning the, uh, cleaning the office and uh, getting rid of uh, old documents and things of that nature. All right. Uh, Walking down memory lane a little bit, too? Yeah. yeah? yeah. All right. We're going to talk about that, too. But you thank you, Mike. People don't, uh, don't, don't bother me anymore. <laughs> You're still on. You're still checking. Actually, I'm in a smaller office. It's closer to the door, so people walk by all the time now. <laughs> you know, in my old office, I was in a real big office way back in the corner, and people have to walk all the way across the office to come to talk to me, right? So they're kind of intimidated, right? So they don't they don't come in too much, but. But no, now, now people drop you in. Uh oh! Put the sign out in front, <laughs> hey, you know. All right, which and is good. Yeah, which is yeah, good. Yeah, I'm in yeah. that I'm in that space right now, so good. that's good. Good, good for you. Thank, Thank you me. again. That was a great moment for all of us to witness your transition. Uh, but in this stage of your life, Mike, we wish you the best. And you know, Thank as we you. say in Hawaii, Mabuhai, may you live and thrive. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mike. Kerry, how about you? How's it? Make like that, bro. I'm nervous. <laughs> hey. It's all good. Hey, man. You know, I'm getting older faster. That's how I am. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but it's all good. It's all good. Uh, oh, uh, they lied to me when they said uh, that with age comes wisdom. <laughs> uh, but I'm smart enough to know that there's a whole lot uh, of people that are a lot smarter than I am. Mm. And that's being akamai or smart too, that you know that. <laughs> and you just surround yourself with those people, right? Yeah, they got to be more smart than me. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I don't work with you, too. Well, welcome, Carrie. We haven't seen you in a little bit, too. But, uh, you know, together, uh, again, we say that you have almost 100 years, a century of community service and leadership. And when you think about it, that has 
everything to do with, with prevention and being the best uh, of ourselves in, in, as staff members, as community members in, in the API community. So you folks are really significant. When I think of the API movement that started almost 50 years ago, you know, Mike Watanabe, Kerry Doi, you know, two presidents and CEOs, long time of their organizations. Kind We're of legends in our own mind. <laughs> 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 legends in your own time, in your own mind. That too, that too. But, you know, now's the time for us to kind of, as we say in Hawaii, talk story. Talking story is just a casual way. Friends get together who haven't seen each other in a while to catch up, to vala'au, right, which means to talk story or just to to you know, just have shared time and space. And that's what we're gonna do. And, and to get you in that mood, I'm gonna ask you to go back and share with the, the viewers, may, may, maybe those who haven't met you before or don't know that you have roots in a very special place. So Karen, I'm gonna ask you, you have roots, where is your birthplace? <laughs> and that's my claim to fame. Yeah. Unless you actually go into the island, you will never meet another guy born on Molokai, Hawaii. <laughs> Why, what part What part of Molokai? Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa, shoot. Right in the middle of the, uh, of the plantation, the pineapple plantation. plantation. Pineapple. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm proud to say pineapple. that. Pineapple. I'm the fourth generation born on a plantation. My kai. Pineapple. My kai means excellent. Kerry, fourth generation. Fourth generation. And how old were you when you left? Uh, elementary school time. Elementary school mm -hmm. time. Yeah. But you never lost Molokai, you know? It's you know, still in you. You. Can, you can take the boy out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of the boy. <laughs> Is it? Still in you. Right on. So you have roots in Molokai. Excellent. Okay. Molokai to Kaimuki to, to Little Hawaii, which is what I call Gardena. Yes, it. <laughs> the island of Gardena. Okay, Mike, how about you? Roots in Hawaii, sir. Well, you know, he's from the pineapple plantation. Mm. I'm from the sugarcane plantation. Mm, mm. I'm a plantation guy too. Man, born what island? on Big Island. Big Island. Pauilo, Hawaii. Pauilo, Hawaii. Damn, you can't just get more country than that. Yeah, just up, up the mill from the mill road in the Pauilo Mill. Shoot. Yeah. Shoot. So you're that's where I was born. Born and stayed till you were. You know, how, how old were you when you left Hawaii? I was ten. Ten. Yeah. So first decade yeah, you were there. Sixth grade. Sixth grade, and yeah. then you came to L.A. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then. Kind of figured out, wow, this is different than Pauilo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? I fell off the pineapple uh, truck, and he fell off of the sugar, sugar truck, truck and <laughs> landed in L.A. Yes, sir. Amen. And look, I've, I've been here ever since. So that's that's a trend. That's a theme here of, uh, of being born on islands, of being uh, born in work settings, you know, in whether country, it's in, in the poverty. country, in poverty and hardship, yep. and then Probably. translate that over here, yep. right? To, to Los Angeles, the big city. No jobs, no schools over there. Right, right, uh, right. People had to come up here for jobs and schools. Yeah, yeah. and that's what y'all did. You yep. both did, too. Incredible. No, thank you for sharing that that early part, you know, and, and I think for those, <coughs> um, our listeners who are, who are listening to this now, that they can, they can, they want to know a little bit about your background. So, you know, we could do that in many different ways, but Tell us a little bit about your, you know, your professional background or, you know, it's hard to encapsulate 46 years, but, but Mike, in general, what, you know, what would you like to share about your, your work experience and your background? Well, I, I, I come to ADAP and started ADAP and still here. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, um, I uh, went to Venice High. Uh, I went to Venice. Santa Monica College. I went to... Cal State Northridge was San Fernando Valley State College oh, man. at the time. Different name. Yeah. <laughs> Different name. Um, but then, you know, we got caught up in those early days mm. um, in the lifestyle mm. changes. Mm. Uh, I was a hippie in Venice, Summer of Love, San Francisco. You had long hair, yeah. St student activist. <laughs> then I got drafted, ah. went in the Army. Helicopter crew chief in Vietnam. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But when I came out, went back to school, and that's when I started into settling into my profession. So back to uh, what's now CSUN, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> discovered the profession of social work there, social work. went to um, 
UCLA grad school, there social work go. school. There you go, Bruins. Then I was uh, uh, placed at uh, Child, Youth, and Parent Counseling in Gardena, where ADAP was at the mm, time. Mm. <coughs> so I asked them for a sub-placement at ADAP. That's how I started here. And that's how it all started at yeah. ADAP? And what year was that? You remember? Yeah, so that was a field placement. That was uh, placement. 1974, Whew. 75. Long time. Yeah. Long time. They gave me one case. Uh, this uh, old hardhead named a Filipino guy, Rudy E. Um, he had Rudy Hardhead. Ex-con nice. <laughs> and a uh, chip on his shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Little guy like me. Yeah. I think they were laughing in the back room and they gave me that client. Oh. <laughs> uh, he ran circles around me. And, uh, you know. Um, you remember the first client? It was, really? it was uh, you mm. know, mm. Uh, I was uh, a college kid as far as he was concerned. Okay. It didn't, d- didn't work out very well. But he was just your first. Yeah. And, f- you know, fast forward throughout the four decades after that, you've yeah. held numerous positions here at ADAP, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, when I uh, finished, uh, uh, they gave me a job. Uh-huh. Okay, so it wasn't, wasn't you know, I may have, he might have <laughs> run circles on me, but I, I, they still gave me a job. So <laughs> so I started as a counselor in the residential program, wow. TC, therapeutic community. TC, yeah. then to? And then to uh, coordinator, coordinator and then treatment director and then uh, CEO. Incredible, and yeah. that for yeah. for forty six years, Mike. That's yeah. an incredible trajectory too. So you did good with Rudy, <laughs> and you're still here <laughs> forty six <laughs> years later. Thank you for that. And, ca- and there's a lot that we'll go back, but that's just basically an envelope of Mike Watanabe's career here, from uh, from uh, from student intern to caseworker to president and CEO. That's mm-hmm. compelling too. Thank you, Mike. Too, Carry your story. Pace, about the same time, right? Your 70s? How did, how did you, st- you were a founder of Pace, yes? Well, I was one of many. Co-founder, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah um, uh, uh, I, I, my my, my uh, uh, career, hmm. if you will, uh, I, I like to say began uh, at 18 years old when, uh, uh, when there were a number of uh, my uh, Counterparts mm. uh, uh, that were that were taking uh, dangerous drugs. Mm. Um, um, uh, at the time, it was it was a barbiturate uh, called um, Reds, hmm. uh, Secanol. Uh, uh, it was a very addictive drug, mm-hmm. um, um, and uh, and these guys uh, didn't fit uh, the the JA stereotype mm. um, and so they weren't the Asian overachievers they weren't right? um, and and so they got a lot of pressure uh, from from their parents uh, and others mm-hmm. um, um, and couldn't handle it and, and so and so they took uh, reds as as uh, as an escape mm. uh, uh, to be able to relieve the pressure right uh, unfortunately uh, it's a very addictive drug mm-hmm. Um, um, and in 1969, uh, nine guys uh, uh, died of suicide. Uh, most of them behind Reds. Uh, wow. or actually, they're all because of their addiction to Reds. Uh, 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 one uh, locked himself in the, in, the, in the car in the garage and turned on the engine um, um, and died of ca- carbon monoxide uh-huh. poisoning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, but it was all behind their addiction to Reds. And these were your friends. Yeah. These were my friends. Wow. They were. They were. All, they were all. They all. Nine of them were uh, half a year behind me um, in school. Um, uh, and so, and so that's why um, uh, we, uh, uh, a bunch of uh, community activists, got together, mm-hmm. uh, and and formed uh, the South Bay Asian Involvement. Hmm. Uh, to provide an alternative yeah. to young people uh, to uh, taking reds and dangerous drugs. In the early 70s, Karen, yeah? Uh, 
uh, actually in 69. In 69, right? right yeah, when, yeah. When, when these nine suicides happened. Mm, mm. Um, uh, and, uh, and that's when we said we need an alternative uh, and, and formed uh, South Bay Asian involvement. Um, and, but we, we needed something more. We needed a, dro a, a drug treatment center. Mm, mm. Right? Um, uh, uh, and so that's when um, uh, my roommate, Gary Uakawa at the time, um, and and uh, Carl Nobuyuki, Carl, uh, who yeah. was uh, new uh, director of youth services um, for the city of Gardena, mm. got together and wrote a proposal uh, uh, and submitted it uh, to the to to the feds. And I forgot what NIDA was called at the time, the National Institute of Drug Abuse. It was NIMH at the time. There was no NIDA at the time. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And so. And so um, um, uh, um, that's uh, when, um, uh, um, well, it, it, it in its first proposal mm -hmm. submission was mm -hmm. was declined, mm. um, and uh, uh, and so uh, Carl brought in a, a, a consultant, okay, um, uh, a specialist uh, 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 that, that that knew all about how to set up drug abuse programs and put together a. Uh, uh, um, a winning proposal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and submitted it um, and uh, it, it rather than submitting it under the uh, the auspices of the city of Gardena submitted it uh, to uh, through uh, using the incorporation of the Japanese Cultural Institute of JCI Gardena, JCI yes uh, uh, and was funded and ADAP was formed wow. right? and uh, um, uh, Mas Pukai, uh, city councilman at the time, um, took money out of his own pocket to incorporate ADAP. Man, right? so that's some history there. Mas Pukai, two thousand dollars. You remember that good, me good memory. Mas right. Pukai took money out of his pocket. I, I, I saw the check. You I saw, saw I saw a copy of the check. Man, yeah. that is history. Yeah, uh, that is history. and that's how ADAP. Yeah, so you that's just how popped ADAP in. was founded. Man. And, and, uh, I didn't know it went in under, under JCI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's so, so it, it, for, for those of us that were the Gardena community mm. activists, mm. Um, uh, we had um, uh, our biggest fear uh, was that, was that uh, they would hire a whole lot of people from L.A. and, 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 and take ADAP out of Gardena and into <laughs> L.A. <laughs> And, uh, and that's what happened. You're going to let that happen, huh? <laughs> that's uh -uh. Happened. You know, and, and, and that's why <clears throat> I'm really happy uh, 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 about all of the work that Mike did. Mm -hmm. You know, is that even though uh, um, ADAP was taken out of Gardena, mm -hmm. uh, still yet ADAP was able to service people from Gardena. Yeah. Uh, and and that was our biggest fear. It's like you know we put in all of this work mm -hmm. into forming this organization, and 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 I'm telling you, we spent days and nights brainstorming, uh, putting newsprint all over the walls yeah. uh, of the Gardena Municipal Activity Center. Nice. I mean, we were up and up until midnight constantly. <laughs> conceptualizing right visioning yeah yes yeah yes yeah yes. you did that that's what it took and he it wasn't the so you were part of the proposal team yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't know that yeah and that's why i remember very well his name is paul namcom um uh, uh, uh korean guy out yeah. of dc yeah uh, uh that was the uh he was an msw he was uh, a consultant you used he's a consultant uh. that we used uh, to, to put get together that. that winning proposal. That winning proposal, and that started the whole thing. Well, that, that you, well, you know Ford and Patrick Okura, right? Yeah. Walt, Walt Lobby did in, in the D.C. Yeah, right? yeah, right? yeah, 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 so yeah. So were, yeah, were, were, were you collaborating with them? And, uh, I wasn't, but them? Carl was. Carl the Carl was. was. Yeah. yeah. We're so happy that you remember these things. That's a long time ago. That's a long time ago. Carrie, thank you for sharing your relation, your history, yeah. together with Mike's yeah. about yeah. ADAP's That's beginning. Good to know. Yeah. Bring it a little bit forward to PACE, Pacific Asian Consortium and Employment. Yes? Yes, yes. And so, and so uh, you know, there were, there were a group of us formed out of the Asian Lunch Bunch. 
yes, uh, that were concerned yeah. about about employment opportunities and 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 uh, I, I talk about my career beginning at 18 years old because uh, what what we did at South Bay Asian Involvement SBAI uh, was look for alternatives to drugs, right. and one of those alternatives was helping people find jobs. Yeah. And so we went to like the local gas station and said, hey, can you give this guy a job? Mm. You know, part time. He doesn't know how to do anything with car, uh, auto mechanics or anything, mm -hmm. you know, but, but, but can you give him a job? Um, and, and it was not only the local gas station, but all of the different uh, small businesses. And I saw how transformative hmm. getting a job right. could be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, um, and so, and so, uh, from there, um, uh, uh, the state employment development department EDD? hired me. Hired you. Hired EDD me. hired you. Right, and that's how I got trained as a vocational counselor. Caridoy has roots as a vocational counselor. <laughs> Note that employment <laughs> access. Yes, yes, and wow. then. Um, <laughs> And, and then uh, uh, participating in the Asian Lunch Bunch, there were a, a, a bunch of us that were concerned about, uh, a, about building a program that was more uh, culturally appropriate yes. for Asian Americans right. um, uh, and Pacific Islanders. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, and so when we heard uh, that uh, the Department of Labor uh, had a uh, 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 grant out specifically to serve Asian Americans and Pacific mm. Islanders. Uh, 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 we went to, uh, we submitted a proposal um, um, and um, we didn't get it. Hmm. Uh, and so we went to, <clears throat> we went to Mayor Yorty. Sam Yorty. And said, Sam Yorty. It has a name out of the past. <laughs> <laughs> it said, we, 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 need to get, we need to get this program funded. We don't know why you gave it to a non-Asian organization. Ooh, so you all threw down. You went out to the mayor. <clears throat> and, 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 uh, and he said, well, it's because um, there's no Asian organizations with, uh, with a track record. Huh. Uh, and so soon after that, um, uh, Mayor Brody, Mayor Yorty lost uh, his re-election to Tom, Tom Bradley. Bradley. Yes. Um, and so we went to Mayor Bradley and said, you know, um, uh, this earmarked funds for Asians <coughs> was given to a non-Asian organization. Mm. They spent all of the money in mm -hmm. six months, mm -hmm. and not one Asian got mm -hmm. a got a job. <laughs> right. And so you need to do something about it. Right. And so he told us that doesn't matter if an Asian organization doesn't have a track record mm -hmm. fund an Asian organization there you go right and so and so and so the Asian lunch bunch right with that and the, out of out of the lunch bunch right um, um, uh, I got together <coughs> and started drafting a proposal oh, cool right and <coughs> and so we went to we said well <laughs> uh, who's gonna submit the proposal well, first of all, we we all agreed that although that there were uh, many Asian organizations at the time, not not compared to now, but mm -hmm. uh, we said we will we as an Asian community will only submit one proposal. Wow. We're not going to have five organizations right. submit proposals. Yeah. We're only going to submit one proposal, uh, and that's how the Pacific Asian Consortium Consortium in Employment was born. Pace right. And <coughs> and we all agreed that ADAP was going to be the fiscal agent. How is that? And so ADAP was actually the parent of PACE. I love it. I love it. I'm getting chicken skin. I don't know, but chicken skin is, <laughs> you know, is, is that feeling when you just realize something wonderful. ADAP is a fiscal receiver for PACE. Yes. And yet, as founder of PACE, you were also involved in the formation of ADAP. Yes. Man, that's yes. full circle. Yes. That's yep. full circle. Yes. Right? Yes. Mike, what'd you think about that? Yep. God. Well, I knew that. Yeah. Uh, I was I wasn't the director. I was working in the T C at the time. Yeah. But but I knew that was going on. Yeah. And um, 
you know that's that's how I that's how I grew up. Mm. That's how I was uh, trained uh, with that strategy, with that philosophy. That um, there are no Asian organizations, so we have to help each other, and mm. we have to grow Asian organizations uh, by by starting projects like that. And so Pace was only the first one. Only the first. And there were uh, others that came along uh, later on. Um, for um, ADAP, it was uh, uh, KYCC. 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 Koreatown Youth and a, Community Center. A, a, right? And a, a project, an outreach project of, uh, of ADAP. Uh, it was two outreach workers yeah. that uh, went out in the community and uh, uh, worked with the community. And uh, after about five years of getting that projects that, that outreach mm -hmm. team out there and garnering support of Korean community members, mm -hmm. forming a board, right. uh, we uh, incorporated it. And uh, in uh, 82, spun them off. We had a, I um, um, can't remember what, CSBG contract, right. I think. Community service block grant. Um, right. 100,000, 150,000. But, you know, that was signed over to them mm -hmm. as their starting funding. And, uh, you know, we knew that uh, if the community, the Korean community embraced mm -hmm. them, they would grow. Mm -hmm. And look at them now. You bet. You, know? you bet. They're huge. <coughs> Uh, and they're one of the few, right? right? You've had others too that you've and, heard. And uh, you know that—that's the kind of model yeah. uh, that uh, worked not just only, only for community services, but for political uh, action. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew at the time that um, the Asian American community advocacy is not going to occur unless there were there was leadership developed, mm -hmm. and the um, best way of developing leadership was to develop organizations with CEOs. The mm -hmm. more CEOs we have, the stronger our advocacy is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, by forming new organizations with new CEOs and, and growing that, um, you know, the, co the community gets stronger. Mm -hmm. Now there's, I'm not sure how many API organizations, 40 or 50 or mm -hmm. something like that, yeah. but you know that strength when you have that many CEOs out in the community doing the advocacy for their organizations that strengthens us all. You bet. You know? That's incredible. That's a lot of alphabet soup. There's a lot of organizations, and they hear this history yeah. of how you you both birthed other organizations, how you birthed ADAP as well as Pace, and what you did for other emerging communities, including the Filipino community too, as well is 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 really a key to prevention and holistic community building, right? Mm -hmm. Is to build organizations with CEOs. You develop people, mm -hmm. right? All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip this a little bit and ask you, when did you guys meet? You remember when you guys met? You know, I was thinking about that because yeah. I saw it on the outline. <laughs> but what was that? I don't remember. You don't remember? Do you remember? It's the earliest memory you have of Mike. See, okay. uh, you know, I was, I was uh, a few years behind him okay. because he was a director when I was a uh, coordinator okay. or something. Okay. And so I wasn't really out in the community mm. uh, as much as uh, at the time Ron Wakabayashi was. Right, right. So, you know, he worked with, uh, Ron worked with Kerry Moore during those times okay. um, while I was uh, working in the trenches, if you will. Right. Um, but so w I became director in 82 and, um, you know, I. I'm sure I met him before '82. <coughs> I want to say in the course that of that work. <coughs> yeah, it, it, I, I I can't remember the the exact instance, the circumstance, mm. but I want to say that that I met you in Gardena. Yeah. Right. Not me. <coughs> uh, when when Adab was still in Gardena. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> All right. We'll lock that in. That's when that's when I was counseling uh, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember my sister. Mm. Who uh, worked for ADAP? Your sister Karen oh. worked. For yeah, she 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 was uh, secretary um, at ADAP for a, for a, for a very brief period. Man. Oh. Yeah. There's a lot of ties here. There's oh, so a lot of ties. Jasmine. 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 Yeah. 
So this is early 80s. You probably oh. met in Gardena, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, Carrie, in the mid 70s. Mid 70s, yeah. okay. Right, a APCON was already formed. Right, Asia no. Pacific Public Policy and Planning no. Council, or not yet? Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. APCON when did ADAP was formed? Come around seventy-eight, I think. Right. Kay. Somewhere, yeah, yeah. So the umbrella organization around our advocacy forms after, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm gonna put you on the spot again a little bit more. I mean, what's what's that one thought or word? Um, okay, I'm gonna start with you. What when you think of Mike, what do you think? What's that one idea or thought? that comes to mind when you think of Brother Mike? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, 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 I think Paulina had it right. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, when I was talking to her in, in preparation for uh, doing this interview, uh, uh, she said, I, I, I forgot what the context was, but she ended up saying, well, you know, you and Mike have big personalities. Uh, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I replied, "No, we're just two fucking old men." <laughs> 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 two goodies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that's what you would say. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. You earned that because you guys have been there from the start. <laughs> 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 All right. Reciprocally, Mike, what would you? What's that one thought you have of Carrie? Voice of God. <laughs> the OG. <laughs> right, you could have been voice over, Carrie. You could have made probably more money doing voice of God for everything API. Voice well, you know, God. I always, my, I always <laughs> started. My, my aspiration was uh, <laughs> to sell my voice to Not Scary Farm, but they never bought it. We started a Showtime that. fundraiser what, about 20 years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, we had this idea that to start the show, we would have somebody uh, anonymously <laughs> uh, right? call the audience yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to order by saying, this is a voice of God. <laughs> and so we thought about, well, who who sounds <laughs> who has a voice that sounds <laughs> like that? <laughs> Kerry <Carrie> Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. So he's been the voice of God ever since. No doubt. <laughs> ever <laughs> since. No doubt. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> You got to hunt hold that. You got to do that again this coming one, right, Mike? There's going to be another showtime yeah. coming up. Yeah. Yeah, right on. Voice of God, that is apropos. That is fitting. <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> right? So to your compadre, that uh, fucking guy, we're just two old guys, and that voice of God, that shit's for real. And you could edit that out, but that is real. <laughs> Thank you for that, too. So we talked about some of the people that were in the lunch bunch, right? Ju Joyce Law. Who were some of the other <coughs> folks that you guys remember? Some of the other personalities. You talked about Carl. You talked about Ron, of course. Anybody else part of that lunch well, bunch? You cannot, um, you cannot leave out um, uh, the Reverend K. Kokubu. Mm. Uh, he's the one that organized the lunch bunch. Mm. Right? Okay. All of the lunch bunch meetings uh, were all uh, at, at his office. Wow. Right? Uh, and he has a long history of yes. serving the Asian community, yeah. too. I remember Kay with the, with the APCF, with the uh, Pacific Community Fund, right? Mm -hmm. And But probably oh, oh, Roundtable. Well, 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 way, be, way before that. Way before, way before that. that. He goes way back before. to all people's. Yeah, all, all people's. All people's yeah. community center. Wow. Yes. Down yes. Uh, south right. of Garment District. Yeah. Right. When it was All yeah. People's yeah. Christian Center. Yeah? yeah. Before people. Well, he was, a, he, re he was the reverend. reverend. He was the yeah. reverend yeah. there. At All People's Christian Center. At the time yeah. when the, the congregation was largely Japanese American. Mm, mm. Yeah. After World War II. Right. So that, yeah. that, that base. So he goes back way back. There's there. a lot of personalities that are there, countless, you know, but those are those, those people that you folks remember. And, and um, Royal Morales. Right. Uncle Roy. Al Morales. Al Mendoza. Al Mendoza. Al Mendoza. Al Mighty Manong. Oh, yeah. Every, every community had its, its anchors, yeah? Yeah. Like that, yeah. right? In the, in the Samoan community, you had the uh, Talaifi, John in them, right? Yeah. And, and uh, oh my Fatasi. Oh my, oh my Fatasi. Fatasi. Uh, of course, Linda Mabala with visual Mabala. communications and telling the stories. I mean, that was uh, a, an incredible time of a classic period of, of API history, and you folks were there, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Esther Soriano. Esther, Esther Soriano, Soriano. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was the uh, first chair of the ADAP board. Mm. Esther Soriano was the first chair of ADAP and, board. And um, Gary. Gary mm -hmm. Uekawa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on the first board of ADAP. Of ADAP on the yeah. first board of ADAP, too. First board of ADAP. Uh, 
we have our articles of incorporation. With their name on it? Their, name, their, their name has lived on yeah. all these 40, 50, nearly 50 years on our articles of in incorporation. That's cool. That's so good. That's There's a lot of cross because everybody, uh, the, it is clear that that the API community was, was doing this as a collaboration, as a yes. consortium. It was Koreans and Filipinos and Japanese Americans from Hawaii and not from Hawaii all working together to do this together, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's amazing how, how the Hawaii guys were able to get along with the Kotongs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I will ask you, Brother Kerry, to, to operationalize and define Katongs for the everyday <laughs> citizen over here. Katongs is well, another word know, for... You know, yeah, when, the, when the coconut <laughs> falls off the tree, the sound that it makes is kotong, 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 because it's hollow on the inside, <laughs> you know, just like the brains of the guys born in, uh, in California, uh, uh, hollow on the inside. <laughs> but it was, I, I love that delivery, but it, it's true. It's a term of endearment for mainland Japanese Americans yes. by, yeah. by Japanese from Hawaii. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is incredible. Any any stories that you haven't told before that you know what's what's a gem of a memory or a story that that uh, you think that no one that someone needs to hear? I'll, I'll, I'll throw that out to you guys. What what is that? Is there anything? We've come back to it. You know, you know, yeah, a story. Uh, Mike and I have been okay, here's coming uh, through many many, <laughs> many experiences. Yeah. Uh, together and the reason why people don't know those stories is because we don't want to repeat those stories <laughs> <laughs> but they live they live in your mind and they're there they're there off air yeah off, off air, air. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay you know but, you, but i have to tell you um uh that uh you know when 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 um afcon was at its early stages yes. uh one of the big uh, uh, battles, if you will, community and fighting, was whether or not APCON should be incorporated. Mm. Right? And, and it was a contentious battle that, that lasted for a good two or three years. Mm. Right? Um, uh, and uh, in the position uh, that we took, and we meaning? We meaning um, Mike and I. Okay. Right? Um, uh, it was that uh, this association of Asian organizations should not compete for funding with its members. Right. And that if ADAP uh, was to get incorporated, I mean, excuse me, if, if, if APCON was to get incorporated, mm -hmm. then there would be that threat. Of competing for funds. Of competing for funds, yes. right, w w uh, with its members. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and that an association was active and effective because it didn't depend on staff. Right, right. Right. Once, once it gets incorporated and gets funded, then all of the responsibilities go to the staff, mm -hmm. that, the paid staff. Right. Right. Okay, um, um, and so and so there is that model of community organizing, if you will, mm -hmm. that it's all volunteer, right? And that the more volunteerism uh, 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 you cultivate, then the more active yes. people become, right? Right. Uh, and so uh, uh, Mike and I uh, fought that battle for a long time. Yeah, uh, people don't know about it. We don't talk about it. Right. But that was important to you then, and do you mm -hmm. think it's the uh, same now? It's a basic what? principle of organizing. Yeah. Yeah. It goes to Sololansky. Right. Uh, basic principles. You don't compete with your uh, members. <coughs> Very basic. Um, so, you know, there are, are some, some true believers mm -hmm. that have carried that principle forward. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that comes to mind uh, uh, strongest is Ford Kuramoto. Mm. You know, when he formed Napapasa, uh, he never uh, submitted a proposal that didn't get 100% blessing from all of its members. Mm. Um, and uh, he was a true believer. Meaning that if one of the members of Napa Fasa said, no, don't go veto for it, power Mike, any veto power, anybody, power. right. That's, that's grassroots. And so he, he restricted his uh, mm -hmm. fun, uh, proposal writing mm -hmm. to things that no one was interested in, no one can do or wanted to do, uh, but what needed to be done. 
Okay. And, uh, and it maintained solidarity uh, because of that, maintaining that principle. Here, here. But four did. It was yeah. the right, was a porno thing to do, right? Porno, it means righteous, the right thing to do, right? On the principle yeah. of it. So it's all about the good peas. Well, let me, let me, let me ask you, APCON today, uh, uh, assessment of the model of API collaboration and agencies today, what would you folks, what would you two have to say about the way things are today? I mean, like everything else, um, things evolve over time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, the purpose and the effectiveness of the Asian Lunch Bunch was totally different from the purpose and effectiveness of APCON today. Okay. Right? We're talking about, you know, 45, mm -hmm. 48, sure. year, 50 years ago, mm -hmm. right? Uh, conditions were different, right? There was a necessity for the leaders of the organizations just to get together in an informal way, just to talk. Right. Right, about whatever subject we wanted to talk about. There was no written agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It was more sharing stories, right? Talk story. Right, talk story. Right? Yeah. Okay, um, building the, 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 the bonding that needed to be built. Yeah. So right. different time, different function, different methods for a different time and place. Yeah. Right, Mike, would you agree? I think that uh, uh, what I've seen uh, lately in, in APCON is that uh, there's a, a part of its work that maintains that principle, mm -hmm. um, that um, uh, they will focus on the thing that need to be focused on that any individual agency or member cannot or don't want to. Right. And one of it is uh, anti-Asian violence. What they have done with uh, anti-Asian violence uh, over the last couple of years has been stellar, and I appreciate it and I support it. It's clear that being there from the beginning that you both uh, have realized that, you know, that was a different era. Two generations ago, that, 50 years ago, two generations ago, and, but APCON is serving the role that it should play now. But it was different back then, right? Mm -hmm. The bonding and the formation of a pan-API kind of collective and movement was important. Yeah, the principle of it, yeah, the core values. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have to remember uh, that uh, uh, possibly the first pan-Asian service organization in LA that was formed was called the Oriental Service Center. Yeah, right? OSC. Yes, <laughs> you know, and 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 uh, like the the just the, the use of the term right. Oriental <laughs> right. uh, yeah. uh, is really abrasive to me. Yeah, right? you know, I, but that was a sign of the times. A sign of the times. Yeah, right? we've we've come away. Yeah, we've come away. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, with with such stellar and almost fifty years of peace, you know, I got to ask you, each one, is there a moment? a project, a program, or a service that really stands out as something that you kind of, wow, you know, this kind of defines yeah, what, you, what you have done for your respective organizations. Mike, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, what, is, there a, is there a program, service, or project, or memory, you know, that really kind of stands out for you as, as, as your ADAP uh, career? Yeah, I, I think uh, APYP. Yeah, and the uh, East-West Community Partnership, those yeah. co two projects. Can you talk a little bit about hand those two? Hand-in-hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, APYP is? Uh, Asian Pacific Youth uh, Center. Mm -hmm. Youth center? Project, APYP. Asia Pacific Youth Project. Project, APYP. Because yeah, APYP. APYP. I was a part of it. See, see how <laughs> old I am? <laughs> I got you, bro. I got you, bro. I got you. But what about the Asia Pacific Youth Project and the East-West Community Partnership stands what? out for you, Mike? Well, you know, th those projects came out of the um, um, wave of funding that came after the uh, Reagan administration, mm -hmm. just say no pro uh, project. But the policy right. uh, priority that I gave to it emerged uh, in the late part of his administration mm -hmm. as massive new projects for uh, substance abuse. Right. 
And we had been waiting for that and, and following that for years. And uh, when it came out, we uh, submitted and we uh, won, won a contract. And in fact, won two, and then a third. Yeah. Um, but that project took us back to the beginning of ADAC. And that's what I liked about it, okay? Yeah. Because ADAP was formed by community groups like uh, South Bay AI and uh, Yellow Brotherhood and a number of others. Mm -hmm. um, and that project gave us the opportunity to bring together uh, youth service a serving agencies <laughs> like SEPA, SEPA, Asian Youth Center, et cetera. Yeah. And so, you know, that project uh, enabled us to uh, do subcontracts and provide funding uh, for those agents, partner agencies and uh, to do youth work in the respective communities. So it's like uh, taking us back. It took know, us back. 20 yeah. years to, to the beginning. You so bet. Uh, you know, and that was the first project. Then we had the gang project that was a parallel project. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then the East-West Community Partnership was also a coalition project. Right. That one was uh, really beautiful because it was indirect service. It was the first time uh, yeah. uh, we've ever had a grant that was indirect service, all for organizing. Right. And we organized services in the uh, different uh, API different communities. communities. Yeah, yeah. And uh, because it was um, uh, indirect service, when Northridge earthquake came mm. down, mm. Um, the feds looked around for, you know, we need to get money out in the community fast. They went to the city, the county, and they needed yeah. motions and right. they needed resolutions, yeah. Yeah. and you know, and they looked around and they, uh, I got a call and <laughs> said, you know, we need to put money out there. Can you do this and that? I said, oh yeah, we can do that. <laughs> they just Smart. wrote a you grant award letter yeah. and added money, cool. about 900000 to our uh, that's East huge West back Empire then. That's huge grant. back then. And then yeah. we put that money out there in the valley in uh, API organizations. And Amazing. That those those projects were tremendous. Yeah. Transformative, if you will, Mike. And I testify to that because I was there. I was a young yes. executive director yes. at ADAP in 1991 when we had this thing called APYP, and it helped us. It helped us grow. It helped us establish systems, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not just SIPA and other organizations, KYCC, right? And it was absolutely pivotal in our development. So I want to thank you for that, you know, for that time, for your leadership. With East-West Community Partnership, there's organizers that are still organizing today because yes. of 25 years yes. ago, right, Mike? Yes. Hey, snaps. Allison Tom. Allison Tom. He's a dean, people. dean Tom Mura. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Got right. Yeah. right on. Well, thank you. And the Asian Youth Center was just getting formed at that yeah. time. Now they're a multi-million dollar yeah. agency. You, you popped know? a lot of stuff, that's and it yeah. that's the principle. It's powerful stuff. It is. It's powerful stuff. Thank you, Mike, for, for walking and sharing your memorable projects. And I'm going to ask the same question, Carrie. Out of, out of all the millions and millions of, of, of dollars of resource and all the hundreds of programs that have come through PACE and that you started, Carrie, is there one that stands out you, you know you, you know um, um, the, the, the short answer is no there isn't one that stands okay. out okay. you know um, um, you know but <clears throat> a couple of things one is that we have made a difference in many people's lives uh, 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 what I like to uh, talk about is that um, the whole notion of multicultural diversity mm. um, is easy to talk about, right? But how many people walk the walk, mm. not just talk the talk, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, and we've been doing it for many years, yes, you have. right? Yes, you have. Uh, not only Japanese, Chinese, Koreans, and Filipinos, right, but Vietnamese, Lao, Thai, right. right? Um, uh, we have, you know, the South Asians from India, Correct. Uh, right. Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Colombians, Peruvians, Salvadorians, Mexicans, Africans, and Africans from um, African Americans and Africans from Africa, yeah. Yeah. right? 
people from all over the world were, were able to speak 40 different languages okay. and dialects. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, and we're all working together under the same roo roof mm. for the common good of the Los Angeles community. Mm. Right? Um, um, and, and I don't know how many uh, people on staff, because we hire from the community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, have come to me literally in tears, uh, uh, saying, uh, you know, I am so happy, so proud to work uh, in the PESO organization, because this is what community really is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, um, And then I, I, ca I can't forget to talk about the, 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 the social justice values. Please do. That everybody is equal. Everybody bleeds the same. True. Yeah. Right? You know, um, uh, and one of the biggest reasons that the incarceration of Japanese Americans into concentration camps occurred mm. was because there were no community organizations strong enough to stand up against right. that force. Right. Right. Um, and, so, and so our goal has always been to build an organization that can speak up, yes. that can contest the wrongful decisions of government placed upon our people. Mm. And that you have. You know, and 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 that's the goal. Right. You know, and, and 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 that's one of my biggest regrets. Because? Because we have not done a very good job in fighting racism. Mm. Right? Um, uh, when I was called a slant-eyed Jap, mm. and told, go back where you came from mm. when I was a little kid coming from Hawaii. Mm. That same thing has been occurring for the last two years. Yeah, right. This, it, people are still being called mm -hmm. those names mm -hmm. and still being call, uh, told, go back where you came from. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that tells me we didn't do a very good job mm. in the last 50 years. Mm. All right. yeah. But that's what we stand for. Out of all of the thousands of people that we serve every year, I'm very proud of. Right? But those are our values. Right. Right? It, we're, the, the, our services, our programs are all rooted in our core values. That's it. And that's what it's all about. Amen. The, the core values of both PACE yeah. and ADA. Right on. Mm -hmm. And, and yep. On that, Mike, I, I think, and Carrie, thank you for that too, the, that overview of you really kind of just the approach of, of, of PACE and to hear how that has been the core value of Ohana yes. has been operationalized here at ADAP yeah. within the recent time, Mike. I mean, it's incredible. You know, we've, uh, uh, I, I grew up here in the TC, you know, the therapeutic community, and the therapeutic community is based on the family model. And uh, we've been saying the family model for 40 years, mm. 45 years. And uh, we've always felt that. You know, we, we have always encouraged that, and uh, we've always uh, made every effort to support each other in that context. And so the family concept has been with us for 45 mm. years. Um, and a, a few years ago, we uh, began a uh, process of uh, strategic planning and uh, retreat mm -hmm. um, and uh, looking at our core values and and the notion of Ohana um, was coined um, to reflect that because Ohana goes beyond family and Ohana uh, extends that family uh, into the community and to bring people together in a common frame of mind. And uh, it, it, fit, it fit us. It, it uh, was synonymous with uh, 
the family concept, mm -hmm. but uh, bigger than a family concept. Mm -hmm. So we have coined that and we use that now and added that to our uh, mission statement. So we feel very good about that. It is. It is so defining and it's, it's, it's really um, um, something that you get a chance to share with other people in the community, whether yes. it's clients or collaborators or government agencies and people take a step back and say, whoa, mm -hmm. why? You know, they, they latch on to it because it's a core value, you know. So, gentlemen, I am brothers. I'm, I'm going to flip the script a little bit and a and, and little bit of quick random questions, okay? Quick random questions. No, I'm scared. Okay? No, no, we're scared. <laughs> scared. Okay, so both of you have been awarded many titles, many awards, many roles. What's, what's that one appointment, recognition, or award that stands out for you? Well, the, the doctorate from uh, CSUN uh, for the work at ADEP was uh, a real big deal. Mm. And, uh, you know, I feel very, very proud and happy about that. Um, but the one that that uh, I cherished even more is a little one. Mm. Um, it was a uh, uh, Carlotta Bass Award from the um, uh, Community Coalition. From COCO. COCO. <laughs> um, Karen Bass started Community Coalition uh, a year after we got our East-West Community Partnership because yeah. she got the same grant. Huh. And uh, she knew that Perfect. we had uh, gotten the, the grant a year ahead, so she called, the, called me one day and introduced herself and explained that she had just gotten an award and asked uh, if she could pick my brain, so we got together. <laughs> she came over to the house uh, and uh, sat at the breakfast room and uh, talked for a couple hours uh, over coffee. Uh, and um, five years later, um, Community Coalition gave me the Colorado Bass Award. Um, that was um, so meaningful because I have so much respect for Karen Bass and what mm -hmm. she has done mm -hmm. with that coalition. Mm -hmm. She really um, um, f created a coalition in the true sense of that mm -hmm. uh, principle of mm -hmm. community organizing. Mm -hmm. She never competed with any of her members and she drew people from ent the entire South mm -hmm. South LA uh, communities and uh, was very powerful. So I'm very happy with that award. It's a little tiny one because they were very poor at the time. It's uh, a, a paper award in between plastic, but I have that on my wall right in front of me and I'm very, very proud of that. Big time meaning though, yeah? Yeah, a lot of meaning. Right. And the moment meaning. when at the annual board meeting, Karen Bass gives opening remarks and says, you know, her good friend and her mentor, <laughs> my partner, I, I had the double shotguns <laughs> up. I said, yeah, do the right thing, man. Yeah. That was a nod. That, yeah. that was meaningful both ways. Huh? Yeah, Karen, what about that? That's but great. she forgot about the breakfast room table. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> minus one. <laughs> you, got her, you get her back on that. Let, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go, uh, go, go, uh, go. go back a little bit. Go. <clears throat> um, um, uh, 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 because I, I, th I, think, I think maybe um, one of my favorite awards uh, was when I got the Opoli Trophy for golf. <laughs> <laughs> what did you shoot? Was it because how much, how, how your score total? Uh, yeah, or because, score because, low? because I, had the, I had the worst score in one tournament. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. Okay. At least you're, but did you have a good time? At that golf yeah? But, 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 the but, Opoli Trophy? The Opoli Trophy. You're going to explain to the audience what the okay, Opoli please. Trophy means? Yes. <laughs> no, I'll let Joel ex explain. Well, Opoli is the backside in Hawaiian. <laughs> and it means you didn't do that good of a job. <laughs> but he got an award for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you know I was uh, uh, I was brought to tears when I was uh, presented um, the award from ADAP, mm -hmm. uh, um, and and I don't even remember what the title of the award was. Uh, but uh, but I I was um, uh, uh, incredibly humbled uh, 
by by receiving right. that award. Yeah. You want the, yeah. the award, the recognition from your compadre yeah. and your compadre and your brother sister organization at ADAP because yeah. Pace and ADAP rolled together. That's why we're co-located <laughs> here. That's why we're co-located yeah. here at the headquarters. You yeah. know. Yeah. So thank you guys for taking us back down memory lane. And there's one other kind of stop down memory lane I want you to stop at. And again, this is not favorites. This is just kind of meaningful. Is there a staff person that kind of stands out for you? And I want, I want to dig a little bit. Is there a, and it doesn't have to be, it, I'm not saying favorite. I'm saying. The bucket trying to make trouble. Ah, <laughs> bro, I see it. We're talking story, but talking story is not always easy. Talking story is a little bit of probing, a huh? little, uh, what you think? What, what, right? So this is, we can edit it out, but this is not about favorites. I didn't say that. I am qualifying myself. But is there a staff member, uh, literally out of the hundreds, almost thousands, that you both have worked with over the course of your career that kind of st just stands out? Not favorite, not favorite, stands out. Mike, what do you think? Is there yeah. one for you? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, I'm retiring, so... You know, <laughs> it's, it's not as risky for me as it is for him, right? Because okay. he, <laughs> for you. he has a supervisor staff, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say very yeah. Okay, go, Mike. What do you do? Uh, but <clears throat> um, Phyllis Mickle um, stands out more than anyone else. Mm. Uh, Phyllis Mickle was a, a graduate of two masts. Uh, a uh, therapeutic community program in uh, Venice. And uh, when I was uh, uh, elevated to coordinator in the uh, TC, I uh, went looking for someone with experience. Mm. And I went to Tumast and I spoke to Candy Latson, who was running the program at the time, and asked him if he had anybody. And he said, I got the perfect person for you. And uh, she was uh, on her, uh, she was phasing out of the program, but he said, uh, he said that this one you ought to hire. And I hired her, and she was terrific. Mm. She was the most intuitive therapist I've ever seen. She never, didn't have an education and didn't use the words I used with my MSW, <laughs> but she could, um, drill down into a mm -hmm. person on instinct without pausing, without hesitation, yeah. and get right at a person's core. Um, wow. and, and the two of us worked together for about five years, and we were powerful together. Mm -hmm. I, I could explain to the other academic staff what she's doing in my clinical terms, mm -hmm. and she could she had my back. Mm. I was sitting in a group one day, and this ex-con was mad dogging me, and I didn't know he was mad dogging me because <laughs> I was too stupid at the time. <laughs> but she jumped on his case and said, "Do you want to stop talking?" <laughs> she yeah, just yeah, yeah. got all of his. Anyway, she she grew generations of ADAP staff. Uh, our leadership today um, was developed by, by Phyllis. By Phyllis. Beautiful. Um, there are uh, alumni out there today mm -hmm. that uh, all remember Phyllis. So, you know, she, she was the sort of the heart and core mm -hmm. of ADA for many years. Beautiful. She passed away Beautiful. several years ago, mm -hmm. but uh, we all remember her. Right. And you know she's an angel watching yeah. over, still yeah. still living, right? Yeah. Through, through those that she worked with and trained, yeah. including yourself, Mike. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Sister Phyllis, right on, right on. Carrie, I know, and not the same, I know you're still working <laughs> with your staff, so this is not to cause any rip, as Mike said. <laughs> but just, you know, in, in your 40 years plus, is there a staff member that just stands out or that you kind of, I know you're looking around saying, are we going to edit this or what? <laughs> 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 it's okay, put it down. It yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just, it's just odd. Big. Bro, we're just talking story. Okay? Uh, we're just talking story. You know, you, you know we've had so um, right? so many staff that, that, yes. that, I, that I've been proud of. I'm still very proud of um, um, uh, 
people that started off as a uh, uh, job training client mm. uh, that, that we hired into an er entry level job uh, that, uh, that, uh, that developed and, and, and continued to show so much potential uh, that they got, um, they got uh, promoted through the ranks um, um, and actually have become uh, department directors. Okay. Uh, I mean, overseeing a budget of like 10, 15 million dollars. Uh, you know, you yeah. know, starting off as yeah. as a job training client. Yeah. You know, um, um, you know but 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 I if I it, All right. drum it, roll. <laughs> if you're gonna put a gun to my head. Well, no, but you did drum roll. Then, Not the guy we're gonna then, do the drum roll. Then her name is is mm. is uh, uh, Maria Leticia Buhai Twason. Uh, 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 <laughs> Milet Twazon yeah, uh, yeah. was uh, my executive assistant for something like uh, 34 years Ooh. or something like that. Mm. Uh, just a wonderful spirit. Uh, 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 and uh, it didn't matter if I was uh, 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 throwing a fit uh, like a spoiled brat or, or, or trying to in intellectualize something. She always had the same calm. Mm demeanor mm -hmm. uh, um, and uh, um, uh, yeah um, mm -hmm. uh, she's um, you know and 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 especially you know when you study organizational development it, it, it um, uh, what what you'll find um, is that is that um, EDs or CEOs um, are very strange people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have you, you can't be a normal person <laughs> and function as as a CEO. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and and the fact that uh, that Mylette was um, this was her first job. Wow. In America. Wow. And her last job, she retired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, um, and and um, uh, I mean, she is just. Uh, uh, the most wonderful, most uh, bes uh, um, uh, besides Mike, uh, excuse me, besides Mike's wife, <laughs> the most patient woman in the world. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you for my let. Uh, for uh, here's to Phyllis and my let, right? Yeah. As as a stat as our yeah. Ohana members, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Now we're having a good time, and I'm glad. Thank you for indulging these this conversation about things that you know, that you may have not talked about, questions that may seem controversial, but it's it's reality, you know? And so it's it's very clear, Mike, you focused on individuals and individual programs, carry your sort of systemic and the core values and, and the approach, and that's complementary, and you need both. You need that, you know, you need that core values and you need that progress to, to make organizations, and it's clear that you guys are, you guys are the mi mighty manons of, of our world, and I I'm just so in awe to be here with you to ask you this kind of almost last question. We're more than legends in our own mind. We're <laughs> legends in Joel's mind, yeah. too. <laughs> right, because we still, we look up to you guys. We look to you guys for leadership. Folks who have been around 20, 30 years, right? The, your relevance is more important now more than ever. I know shit you. I know kid you. That's for real. And Don't make like that, bro. Nah, that's it. That's that's real kind. <laughs> and and coming back to eight up a year and a half ago, it just meant so much to me that, uh, th that our community welcomed me back to you. Yeah. <laughs> so now, it's this stage of your guys' career in life, Mike. You made that transition, Carrie. You know, you're going to still work for however long you're going to work. But here's the issue. Being very foundational in your organizations, I want you to, I want to try to ask to see what your nuggets are for the generations to come after you, right? The wisdom, the message that you want to give to all the staff members, all the volunteers, you know, all the stakeholders for both ADAP and PACE moving forward, you know? After, after you're gone, after this generation's gone, can you share that, you know, kind of capture that into a message, yeah? Mike, you want to go yeah, first? It's, it's simple to me. Okay, it's, go. Uh, serve the people. Serve the Very people. Very simple. Serve the people. Uh, we, are, we grew out of the community. We're a product of the community. Uh, we owe a debt to the community. Uh, we are not 
a, an organization above the community. We are a reflection of the community. And, and the staff need to all remember that, that that's what their purpose is here, mm -hmm. is to serve the, the people. Mm -hmm. And so it's really that simple for me, serve the people. Chicken skin time, okay. Chicken <laughs> skin. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, the people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Kerry Doy. You know, I, I, I love seeing the passion of the younger generation. Mm. Right? Um, um, uh, and, and it just inspires the hell out of me to be able to work even harder. Mm. Uh, um, uh, but number one, if you want to make a good living, then get out of this business. Words <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. of wisdom. Yeah, because you be, uh, be, uh, because uh, 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 it is hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, right? You see, that's it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. You know, uh, um, and and that's why uh, at our annual uh, staff gatherings, um, I call them out. Uh, you know, um, uh, those of you that have been here for twenty years or more, stand up. Mm. Those of you that have been here for thirty years or more, stand up. Those of you that have been here for 40 years or more stand up. <laughs> and it just blows me away that we have over 100 staff mm -hmm. that have been here for 20 years or more. 100? Over Ooh, 100 staff. Over 100. Yeah. 20 or more. <clears throat> and that's why I say, you know what? I don't know what I got to do to get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, uh, you know um, uh, but secondly... Scientific studies have been made hmm. to show that you're healthier and you're happier if you're doing something greater than yourself. Mm. Word. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, and that's what uh, I'm always telling my staff uh, is, that, is that it's our kuliana. Yes. Yes, yes. It's our responsibility. Um, because we stand on the shoulders of giants, those that came before us suffered so much, endured so much pain, lost so many lives so that we could live a better life. Yeah. All right. And so, and so, in the modern terminology is pay it forward. Right. But it's our kuleana. Yes. It's something that we have to do. It's right. our responsibility. Right. And it is. It does make you healthier and happier if you're doing something greater than yourself. That's right. I would support that because you guys, you don't look too bad, you guys. <laughs> 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 if you serve the people, you serve yourself. Yeah, that's kind Nothing. of what, what I'm, it's full circle. Mm -hmm. And if you serve the self, you can continue to serve the people. It's a sustainable right. model that's built on service to others of, of responsibility and taking care of each other, right? And that's what we do. And, and that's what that I did, want to do, is to provide the vehicle, provide the a place for people to do that. And, uh, you know, I'm happy that we'll be able to. That's it. You'll continue. Yeah. Ain't that forevermore, Mike? That's <laughs> it. We'll continue to be a place where people, it's a safe place where people can serve other people, mm -hmm. a place where people need people and where we serve people. Yeah. So thank you, Mike, for, for your illustrious <laughs> career. We mahalo you, I said that. And we said we give you a great big shaka because we want you to know everything is going to be okay because of you here at ADAP. <laughs> and for Brother Kerry, for your kuleana, you know, and you're, you're going way back to starting all these organizations and being a constant uh, for almost half a century. Or more than, when did you start at Pace, Kerry? Well, well, we opened our doors in January of 75. 75. 
right? Okay. Uh, but uh, but we started uh, the the groundwork, the community organizing in '73. In '73, right? Um, and there were a number of us uh, that have been involved in the Asian community movement in in yeah. LA uh, since the late '60s. Yes, right. Um, right. I know, um, but I have to say, you know that that back then. The average lifetime of a staffer hmm. in an Asian organization was three years. Three years. <laughs> After three years, it was burnout. You're Paul already. Paul. And then you Gone. do something else. Yeah. yeah. Really? Right. Did you? Wow. Right. Right. Um, um, you know, just because it takes so much emotion, it takes so much out of right. you. Right. Um, uh, uh, and especially if you had that passion. Right, uh, then it it can take a big toll mm. on you, mm -hmm. right? And 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 let's face it, the compensation that we offer is not as much as what uh, the city or the county or any government agency can offer, sure. right? Sure. Um, uh, uh, and, and so people do move on to better things. But what has happened is that is that is that we have become quote unquote agencies mm -hmm. but we're different from municipal agencies for sure right because we have core values yes yes we have core values right we well have said. a mission yeah we have a purpose we have a purpose yeah. right yeah. that's how we're different yeah right you know, and that's one of the things that i am most proud of mike mm. is that he has built a culture right you know, and there are many things. I mean, it's easy to be a boss. Anybody can be a boss. Mm, mm. But how many can be a leader? True. Yeah. Right? And that's what a leader does. Yeah. Right? And that's what Mike did, is he built a culture. Now, let me say, you know, Mike screwed up. I screwed up. We both screwed up. Mm, mm. Okay? But what stands out, What's most important is that is that all of the people's lives that ADAP has made a difference in add up to a community, right. and that's what Mike has built mm -hmm. over these years mm -hmm. is a culture of service and family. Here, here, all right. You know, and so as Mike starts to write his final chapter, people need to understand that. Mm. You know, it's not an easy thing to do to be a good leader. It's easy to be a manager. Mm -hmm. It's easy to be a boss and be as dogmatic as you want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to be a good leader, and Mike has demonstrated that he's a good leader. Here, here. Yeah. Well said. Where's the Mambuhai toast? Bro? No, you gotta, pay me. you gotta pay me. We gotta toast. We should, <laughs> should be toasting. Okay, well, let me, let me end this up. Um, you know, let me pile this. Um, we want to thank our listeners and our collective families uh, that have uh, tuned in maybe the first time or long term, whether you're a staff member of ADAP, uh, a former staff member of ADAP or PACE, uh, or if you're just talking about how the very resilient community-based groups and nonprofits in Asian and Pacific Islanders have worked over the course of two generations to serve the people and to serve themselves and to pay it forward, then we think that that's a good message for prevention every day in every way, that you gotta serve the people. And if you could serve the people, you'll be taking care of yourself and your family too as well. So, Joel Nacinto signing off here at ADAP headquarters with the president and CEO Outgo president Emeritus of ADA, Mr. Mike Watanabe, and the President and CEO of the Pacific Asian Consortium of Employment, Mr. Kerry Doy. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs>